Hello YouTube, it is Araya. Welcome back to Project Pixel, the series where I create a video game from scratch with you guys in Game Maker. So it's been a little bit, sorry about that, I had to move and I recorded some more episodes and then I decided to kind of change some of the content, so I had to scrap that and redo it. Um, but we're back now, uh, hopefully we can get this out weekly. And uh, today we're actually going to do both audio system and a menu system because I've created some libraries for us to use. So to start with, if you go to um, the website in the description, ariasewick.github.io, just like that, this is the same website you can go on to get all the resources which are linked in the description, right here, right? Uh, episode three will be up there by the time you see this, of course. Um, but we're gonna download both the audio library and the menu library. So go to the Arias audio library and just download version 1.2.0 latest, uh, or whatever the latest version is for you. Go home and go to the menu library and download the 1.0.0 latest for that as well. Uh, and we're going to use those in our game. Let's go ahead and minimize this, go back to Game Maker. We're going to go to Tools and Import Local Package, just like we did for the Input Library. Tools, Import Local Package. Go to Downloads and then Araya Menu Library. Go ahead and add that. Hit Import. And we can drag that menu folder into Libraries. You do the same thing. Import Local Package, Audio Library. Add that. Hit Import. And we're going to throw it into Libraries. If you'd like an in-depth look of what these libraries do, I'm going to upload a video very soon uh, for both of these. Probably between this video and the next video, between this video and next Friday, I'll post uh, a video for one of them, probably the audio library, and then the next week I'll post it for the mini library, just because I don't have a whole lot of time. Uh, and, you know, those will just be an in-depth look on how to use them and how they're made and such. But we're just going to kind of briefly look at look at what they do today. So for the audio library, we've got an audio object and an Araya audio lib settings. And the same thing with the menu, we've got a UI menu and a RIA menu lib settings. So for the audio settings, let's open this up. Uh, you get things like the license, Creative Commons Zero. Uh, basically, you can use this in a commercial game and it, you're totally fine. Uh, some light instructions and where you might be able to find documentation once that's out. You can't yet, but that link you know, will take you to the, the page where you download it, which will have a link to it eventually. The settings themselves, we actually aren't going to mess with. We've got things like the priority of background music, sound effects, and background sounds. Uh, which just has to do with, you know, Game Maker's way of making things audible or if too many sounds are playing, which ones to not play and such. Sound effects is the most important to play, BGM is the second most, and beat back on sounds are the least. And I'll explain what those are in just a minute. Then there's audio falloff settings uh, for if you're using the features for playing sounds at, you know, like, um, you know, sound coming from a specific spot so you can hear it out of the right ear or the left ear or whatever. Uh, so this is some of the settings for that. We're also not going to change that. Uh, if you know what these do, you can go ahead and change it. But also, if you don't know what these do, you can leave them as default and be perfectly fine. Uh, let's look at the audio file real quick. I'm going to explain a little bit of how this works. Uh, so, there's three types of sounds, basically. right? There's the, there's the background music, there's the sound effects, and there's the background sounds. So, background music is a loopable track. Uh, that could even have special loop parameters of like wh where in the track to start and where in the track to end the loop. And uh, only one piece of music can be played at a time. Sound effects, uh, the whole list of them. You can have as many sound effects playing at a time. They can be played at a location and they never loop. Background sounds, uh, there can be a whole bunch of background sounds playing at a time. They always loop and they can also be played at a location. So use cases, you know, music could be background music, of course, that makes, you know, that's just how it works. Sound effects are like, you know, blips on a menu or pressing a button or, and background sounds is like, you know, some rain in the background or some drips or, or you know, various background noises that aren't really sound effects or music. And that's basically how it works. There's a whole bunch of functions in here that you can use uh, that when the documentation comes out, I'll cover all of them. Um, but you can kind of look through here and see description for them and kind of figure it out yourself if you, if you know how to do that. Uh, otherwise, I'll explain the ones that we'll need for this video, of course, when we get to them. So we can go ahead and close both of those. Now for the menu library, let's look at the menu settings. Uh, very similar things up here uh, under Creative Commons Zero. Uh, it actually has automatic support for my audio library if we're using version 1.2.0 or later, which we are. Um, and if you look in here, we're actually going to need to change some of these settings. So there's three different, uh, basically, regions for settings here. Input settings, first of all. Uh, and this is basically... Uh, for how we navigate a menu, right? So we can put our own code in here if we're using the, the built-in system, but because we are using Juju Adams' input library in this tutorial, we can get rid of this code and uncomment this. And in fact, our, our, uh, our verb for up is just up, so we can leave that be. 
right? And all this is saying is that um, when we're trying to navigate the menu, my library is going to look at these functions in here to figure out um, you know, what buttons you're pressing. And that's just so you can integrate it with your game, with your input system as best as, best as you want. So you can put a bunch of logic here as well. You can say like var bool equals false. And then you can say like if input check pressed up, then bool equals true. And then you can say like, um, if, I don't know, input check pressed uh, stop, then bool equals false. I don't know, whatever you want, and then just return bool, right? So you can put whatever code you want in here for determining like uh, if we should be navigating up or not, right? But you know, for now, I'm just going to keep this as it was. Um, and do, there we go, get rid of all of that. Uh, because basically what this is doing is um, if we are using the input library for our verb up, which we've defined before, uh, then that lets us navigate up in a menu. So we're gonna do that same thing with the other ones. And I actually have the defaults here for most of them for all the directions because, you know, up, down, left, right, get rid of this and uncomment that. Now for confirm and cancel, uh, these two are what happens when you when you like want to navigate into an option like you, you click on an option or you press the back button right uh, we actually call those verbs Z and X in our game right so Z is the confirm button and X is the cancel button so that should add in all the input so we can go ahead and minimize the input settings and now for game size settings uh, this is basically for the size of our game yeah it's just that right so 320 by 240 is the correct size, but we actually have a macro for it. If we go into scripts, macros, we can see that we've got game width and game height, right? So let's go ahead and, you know, this actually says if you have a macro for it, you can go ahead and put it here. So instead of returning 320, let's return game width. And instead of returning 240, let's return game height. I can go ahead and minimize that. And now menu defaults. Uh, we will come back to this, but we're just gonna leave this as is for now, and we're going to come back to this as we add some more assets into our game. Um, but this is basically for the default, you know, font, uh, sprite for the box, uh, sound effects, uh, whether it's anchored, where in the screen that the menu is anchored, X and Y offset, colors for the options and all that. Um, we'll deal with that later. But for now, let's go ahead and close all that. And let's go ahead and look in our UI menu real quick. Uh, this is going to be a little more complicated to explain, so I'm not going to go through it in too much detail. Again, if you're curious, you can look at the uh, the the in-depth tutorial that I'll be coming up with coming out with probably next week. Uh, no, sorry, wait. Today's Friday, so probably the week after next week. But again, I will be explaining everything we need to create the menu system that we're going to create in, uh, in this video. So basically, I got very various constructors in here to create uh, structs like menu page rows and. Uh, menu page columns and menu page free and stuff like that for various pages and options. Uh, I can't really explain too much of what's actually going on in the meet here until I like show you how to use this. So I'm not really gonna worry about it too much. I'll go ahead and close out of that. Let's go ahead and add some resources for us to use in the menu. Now in, in the description, you'll find a link to a font M5X7, right? It's a link to this, this page right here, this itch.io page for M5X7. It's a nice font uh, that is nice and pretty free to use as long as, um, it is free to use even without attribution, but of course, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to give attribution to Daniel Lenson here. Uh, it's a pretty nice font for, for pixel art games, basically, because it's a, you know, it's a, it's a pixelated font. So let's go ahead and download it. Uh, no thanks, take me to the downloads and hit download. And we got that m5x7.ttf and click on it and hit install. I've already installed it in my computer, but you go ahead and install it. Uh, and then we're going over to Game Maker. We're probably gonna have to restart Game Maker if we just install installed it. Then we can go over to this fonts folder, right click, hit create, and then a font. Type in FNT is the prefix for this type of asset, and then M5X7. You can name it whatever you want. I'm just going to name it the name of the font. Now in the menu here, the select font, we're going to change Arial to M5X7. If we actually hit the M key on our keyboard, it jumps to the M section, and it's right there on top. Uh, 12 is a good size, style medium, this is all fine, but we're going to turn anti-aliasing -alias off. So to set that option to off and go ahead and close that, and that's our font gonna use this for everything in our game, but you can have different fonts for different parts of the game. And it should be pretty obvious uh, how to do that because each time we add a new thing, we have a way to set the font and you can just set different fonts to different things easily. Let's also go to our sprites uh, folder down here. Right click, hit create sprite, and I called SPR underscore BG underscore title, right? So it's a sprite and then it's also a background 
and it's for the title screen. So now in the resources zip file that you downloaded for this episode, uh, you can go ahead and drag an spr.bg title.png, hit yes, and there it is. Close that out, and then we're gonna go ahead and right click on sprites, create sprite spr underscore ui underscore box underscore black, right? So it's a sprite, and then it's also for the UI, and it's a black box. And then we can go ahead and drag in the SPR UI black, uh, box black dot PNG, and there it is. We're going to have to do something called nine slicing for this, uh, which I actually uh, explained when we did the, uh, the solid marker. But just walking you through it right one more time, hit this next nine slice button, hit activate nine slice, and this time we're going to drag this in two pixels. We did one for the marker. And that's just so that this center thing is just one solid color, and these things are all, um, all all can be stretched in one direction, right? And there we go. That's all you need to do. If you go over here to the side, you can stretch this all you want, and it still looks nice. Go ahead and close that out. Now for the sounds, we're gonna actually take all of the uh, dot wave files from the from the resources zip file, and just drag them into the sounds folder right here. It should create all of them, and it should be totally good. Uh, I'm gonna get to BGM Force, BGM Force original later. We're gonna actually end up deleting the original one, but that's just uh, a way I wanna showcase the audio system that we have going on here. I'm gonna go ahead and right click and hit Windows, close all, just to get rid of all of those sound windows that opened up. And now that we've added all our resources in, let's go back to our menu uh, settings, and we're gonna add some of those resources in here. So menu defaults, here we go. So the default font, um, I'm gonna set this to FNT underscore M5X7, and this of course can be overridden for any option or any menu, but this is just the default one. And this can be undefined, but if it is undefined, then you have to set it for that menu. If you want to have to set it for every menu and it's different for every menu, you can leave this undefined. But I would recommend setting something here, like a font for the default font if you didn't set a different font. Same thing for this default sprite. I'm gonna use SPR underscore UI underscore box underscore black. Um, but of course, uh, you could set that you know, by page, by menu page, uh, a different box color or a different sprite or whatever you'd like. Uh, same thing with the blips. I'm going to do uh, SFX underscore menu underscore blip underscore Z for the confirm blip. For the cancel blip, blip SFX underscore menu underscore blip underscore X. For the move blip, blip, we're doing SFX underscore menu underscore blip underscore move. And then the horizontal and vertical anchor, we're going to leave as center and middle. Uh, X offset and Y offset, we're gonna leave at zero and the colors we're gonna leave as are. Of course, you can tweak any of these things if you like, if you wanna make it look better. Uh, what bas basically what this is gonna do is it's gonna have the menu just be in the center of the screen. If you want it to be on the top of the screen, you can change the top or maybe the left of the screen, change it to the left. If you want it to be a certain amount of pixels from the top left, you can have them be top left and then set actual pixel numbers here. Or even if you want it to be like centered, but a little bit down, you can just have it be center and middle and then change your Y offset to like 100 or something. Very customizable. And then same thing with these colors. We get four different colors here. Basically, it's a, a gradient from top to bottom of this color than this color, right? So it's a white and then a gray. It's a gradient for an unselected menu option. I'll sh you'll see what that looks like uh, when we actually get the menu up and running. And then for the selected one, the same thing. It's a, it's a bright yellow and kind of a, a darker yellow um, for the selected menu option. And this, again, can be overrided per option, but this is just the default. All right, and that's it. So we can actually close out the menu, uh, the menu settings. That's all we're gonna need. And let's jump into like actually using some of these libraries. And let's get into actually using some of these libraries. So the first thing you have to do in order to use the audio library is we actually have to place an instance of the audio object in our first room. It is, if you notice, if you go to libraries, audio, audio, uh, it is a persistent object. So we only have to place it once, right? We can go to our rooms, our splash screen, and we're just gonna throw in our audio object onto this room right there. And now we can use it, right? We can close the splash screen, go to our room. Uh, and if we go to our creation code here, this button down here, uh, basically this is code that's run when the room starts for the first time. So we're done with the splash screen, it gets in here, we run this code, right? And we're gonna do audio.bgm underscore play. And then the name of our uh, sound, which we go to the sounds down here, we're gonna play BGM forest. BGM forest, just like that. I go ahead and close that out, and let's go ahead and hit play, and let's see if our if our background music started playing. After the uh, I skip splash screen, it did not. But that wasn't because of what we did. That was actually just because uh, I have uh, some outdated 
um, save data. So we'll go over to a explore window if this happens to you. If it doesn't, then don't worry about it. Type percent local app data percent. And we're going to go to project pixel right there. And just go ahead and delete this stuff. That's, you know, old, old save stuff. I was messing around with some future stuff. There we go. Skip the title screen. And there we go. The music plays. It's a little bit loud on my end. I should hopefully turn that down for you all. All right, we're gonna go ahead and close that out. Uh, yep, so it seems like it works. It seems like our audio library works. We uh, managed to play a, a background music. Open this up, managed to play uh, BGM Forest while we were in here. Now uh, it, it loops by default. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna play this and I'm gonna jump to when it loops because it's gonna sound awkward when it loops. Uh, and I'll explain how we're gonna fix that. Right, here we go, it's about to loop. Uh, you hear that? That was a horrible loop. Now this is where BGM Forest Original and BGM Forest comes in. Uh, in fact, actually, let's go ahead and delete uh, BGM Forest Original from our uh, from our sounds. So we're actually not going to use it in game, uh, but uh, we're going to open up Audacity. Uh, and if you don't have Audacity, you can get it for free. There's a link to it in the description. But if you don't want to get Audacity, you don't have to. Um, but you can follow along with me if you'd like. Let's go ahead and drag in BGM Forest Original into this. This is the original file that I composed. Uh, also, just so you know, all of these sound effects and uh, and music files I created myself or used you know a generator to make. Uh, my own content and stuff. Uh, so you are free to use this in your projects. I would highly discourage using these in your own projects. Oh, you know, I guess you could use the blips, but the, the music just because it was created by me. And like, you know, you totally can, but I would highly encourage you to create your own stuff. In any case, this actually loops a lot nicer. Uh, it starts, if you notice, this first little section doesn't have the, uh, the bass note. And then the bass note starts here, right? And if we go over to the end of this file, then it ends there. And if I actually go over to the beginning and try to hit loop, it's not a horrible loop. It just doesn't have the bass note, right? So we really want it to loop to here. That's really what we want, right? So I believe uh, it's six seconds in is the exact time. Six seconds right here. There we go. So if we select six seconds to the end of the track and we, uh, and we try to loop it, My bad, we have to change the loop region. I think I gotta drag this. Dasty is a little bit complicated sometimes. There we go. Oh, nope. Okay, drag this to six seconds. If I can zoom in enough. Ah, that is not a good sound. Six seconds, zoom in. There we go, close enough. And then we drag the uh, the end of that loop section. There we go. So now if we uh, if we loop that section right there, it sounds a lot lot better, right? It sounds a lot better. So if you've got your own track, basically how you want to deal with this is you want to go over. You want to just kind of figure out where I'm going to get, can I get rid of this loop region? There we go. Uh, clear looping region. Uh, if you want to figure out how to loop your own file, then you just have to go ahead and select from the end. Cause I, you know, I would, ima I would imagine you'd make your track loop from the end to some place in the middle, right? Uh, select from the end to, you know, a certain place and just kind of test it out. Right. And a lot of times, uh, these, See that that wasn't a good spot, but a lot of times these waveforms here are a good clue of what, when, like when instruments come in or things like that. So you can use that to your advantage. And you can right click, hit clear looping region, and try it again. Uh, for me, you know, I was like, oh, it's somewhere around where uh, where the instrument comes in. It turns out it's like exactly six seconds, which is really nice. If I go ahead and play, oh, I didn't hit the loop button. That's okay. Ah, uh, you guys, you guys heard earlier. Go all the way to six seconds. And you can actually see down here as well uh, what the actual uh, selection is. Hit loop and try that again from the end here. Sounds great to me, right? So that's what we figured out. That's our region. We know six seconds to the end of the track. So at that six second mark, right? 
make sure our selection is six seconds, uh, we can go ahead and right click and hit split clip, right? So now what's happened is we've got the intro here and our looped segment here. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and right click down here and hit add stereo track. And I'm actually just gonna drag this looped segment to this track. All right now I wanna make sure this lines up well. There we go, right? So now if I play this, it should still be seamless, right? Because it goes from the intro to this one, because these tracks are playing at the same time. Perfect. So now this is the loopable segment. We can just select this and it loops. Perfect, right? So now how we're gonna get this to work with my audio library is unfortunately with Game Maker's audio library, you can only loop entire tracks. And you also can't like check when the track's over and then set the position back to the beginning of the loop because uh, it kind of runs separately from the step system. So you're not guaranteed uh, to hit a certain position on a step event. Like for example, you might be um, you know, 10 milliseconds from the end at one step event and the next step event it's already over. So neither of those locations, uh, it will successfully like say, yes, the track's at the end point, you should set the time. So instead, how we do this is I'm actually gonna take a tiny bit of the beginning of this loop, let's say like that much, right? And we're gonna copy it and we're gonna go ahead and paste it up here, right? So now if we get rid of the loop and we just listen to this, that also works, right? And that way, when it gets to the end, there's a little bit of wiggle room and then in code, uh, my, my library will just say, oh, is it past this point? Yes, okay, we'll subtract the length of the loop from the position, right? So this spot that it's at will be identical to this spot, so it will seamlessly loop. So that's basically how you set something up for my audio library, right? Is you figure out the loopable segment, you have the little intro, and then you go ahead and paste a little bit of the, be of the beginning of the loopable segment at the end, and then you have to write down the beginning and end of the loopable segment, right? So the beginning of the slip of a segment is six seconds exactly, right? Uh, if it could be 6.115, uh, which would say down here, and you could, would write that down, but in our case, it happens to be 6.000, uh, just because of the tempo I used. And then at the end here, it's one minute and 18 seconds, so that's 78 seconds, 78.000. And those are our two numbers, right? And then you can go ahead and get file and export as wave and go ahead and you know export it into a directory that you can load into Game Maker, but I'm not gonna do that because I already have, this is what I did with BGM Forest. That's why it loops so awkward, is you know I had this and I had this little segment at the end. And this, and I know the time is six, six seconds and 78 seconds are the two the, the two uh, beginning and end mark points of that track. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, close that Audacity, hit no. And we're gonna set up the looping. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our, our room, right, where this, this this uh, line of code was. And before it, we're gonna type audio.bgm underscore set loop info. So this is gonna take in a track, so we can say BGM forest, a start point, which we know is 6.000, and an end point, which is 78.000. These are in seconds, of course. Seconds and then milliseconds are here, right? Uh, and basically this is going to tell our my audio library, hey, this is where this specific track should loop, and then we're gonna play that track. And now if we run it, uh, you can go ahead and sit through it. Obviously, I can't really have a way of proving on my end without sitting through the entire audio file that it works. Um, but I'm gonna go make sure it works real quick and it should work for you. So if you're curious on hearing uh, how it ends up working, go ahead and run the game yourself and sit through. It's about, you know, 78 seconds. All right, I let that run in long enough, a little bit longer than one loop, honestly. It sounded perfectly fine. Uh, so yeah, so that's exactly uh, how to do it, right? It's just you wanna set uh, those, those times that you mentioned, uh, that, you, that you wrote down in that Audacity file. Uh, right before you play it, or if you play it multiple times, maybe do this uh, in some game create option, which might end up being what we do later on, right? But for now, this is perfect. All right, now let's go ahead and go to our player object, objects, player, and our step event. And down here in the debug stuff where we save, let's also have this play, uh, like let's say mini blip success, right? So let's say audio dot, and then we can say sfx underscore play instead of bgm play. And let's just go ahead and take SFX menu blip uh, success, right? And you could also in here put like, you know, I want it to fade in over 100 milliseconds at twice the normal volume, or I think it's in percentage, so 200, no, it's, give me a second. <laughs> it looks like, oh yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's 
one is 100%, so two would be twice the normal volume. Or you can say at half the normal volume, 0.5 or whatever, right? And then a pitch, maybe twice the pitch or 1.2 times the pitch. Um, but we can just leave this as just the sound uh, and it'll play it perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and play and let's go ahead and text this out by, uh, by trying to save. Walk around, hit V. Yep, there we go. It's getting a bit loud, but it works. And of course, the BGS, uh, the background sound would also play. I'm going to get rid of uh, this, go to the room again, creation code, uh, and we're going to also go ahead and add an audio.bgs play, sfx underscore rain. No, no, sorry, sfx, bgs underscore rain, uh, just, to, uh, just to see how it works. There we go. You can hear that rain in the background there. And of course, the reason that it's like, separate from BGM is so that multiple can play at the same time. It can play alongside BGM and it has a different volume slider in the menu. So you can just turn down the music, you can just town, turn down the background sound. I'll close that, get rid of that. Uh, and we're gonna leave the music here for now. Uh, but yeah, that's basically uh, the, the basics of the audio system. And we'll get more into that system as we go and also in that video I talked about. All right, now the real meat of the video, we're gonna do the menu system. We're gonna set up a pause menu and a title screen menu. Uh, we're not gonna go into uh, uh, um, configuring controls yet. That's gonna be next video, uh, just cause it's a little bit complicated. Um, but we're gonna go with just you know the pause menu and the, and the title screen menu. So to get started, we're actually going to need a title screen. We don't have one yet. So let's go into our rooms folder, right click hit create and then room. And we're gonna type in rm underscore title. Perfect. We're gonna go ahead and click on this little this icon right next to it. And we're gonna drag RM title right under RM splash. So it's RM splash, then RM title, then room one. Uh, mostly just these, this order matters because uh, we want the splash screen to take you to RM title. Go ahead and close that. Uh, and we can go ahead and in here, go to background and change the sprite to our SPR BG title, this sprite right here. And then go back to instances and we're gonna go ahead and go to this objects folder, right click, create, object, and we're going to call this rmh underscore title, just like rmh underscore splash. This is the room handler for our title screen. Uh, we're going to come back to this, but we're going to go back to our room, and we're just going to go ahead, not that room, rm title, and we're going to drag in rmh title into the room. And save that. And now we're going to go down to our sequences and our sequence splash events. And when the splash screen ends, instead of doing this, we actually just want to room go to next. Right, we just want to go straight to the title screen. I'm going to go ahead and close that out. And now if we go ahead and run the game and we uh, get through our splash screen, uh, then we can't get into the game itself yet, but once we do skip our splash screen, we are on the title screen. Perfect, just what we wanted. All right, now let's go over to the RMH title, and we're gonna add a, add a create event, add a step event, and add a draw GUI event. This is getting pretty routine. I'll go ahead and full screen this. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of all of the stuff in the draw GUI event, get rid of all the stuff in create event, so, I mean step event, and get rid of all the stuff in create event too. Now, before we actually code in here, I know we're jumping around a lot. Forgive me. We're going to go over to our macros. This is actually uh, a macro we're going to add. Uh, get rid of the space. At the bottom here, we're going to do macro depth UI top, and it's going to be negative 100. And a macro depth UI menu will be zero. We'll add more depth macros later, but those are just the two we're going to use today. Let's go ahead and go back to the create event. We can close that macros. And we're gonna say the depth of this uh, room handler is gonna be depth UI top. And then we're gonna say alpha equals zero, and our font is gonna be equal to FNT underscore M5X7. And this is not for, for the font for the, uh, the menu that we're making. This is a font for a couple other things we're drawing. We're gonna create the menu in a minute, but I'm gonna actually add these things first. So for now, that's it for the create event. Let's go to the step event. And we're just gonna say basically if alpha is less than one, then we're going to add to it. We're going to say alpha plus equals one over 30. So it's going to start tr um, transparent and then it's going to be, and then we're going to add uh, one thirtieth to the alpha until it's fully opaque. So that means the title screen is going to fade in. And how we're going to use that is we're going to say draw, or actually at the bottom here, we're going to say if alpha is less than one, which that's not it. If we say if alpha is less than one, uh, then we're going to say draw set alpha one minus alpha I'm gonna say draw rectangle, zero, zero, game width, game height, and false. 
and then draw set alpha one, right? So, you know, if alpha is zero, then it's gonna be one, right? And if, draw, if alpha is almost one, then it's gonna be almost zero, right? So that's just gonna, you know, draw a black rectangle over it. And it's, it's, it's uh, the reason I didn't set a color is because we're actually gonna draw set color uh, black earlier, right? And so that's just gonna carry over, right? So yeah, basically draw a black rectangle on top of the screen to fade in. But before we do that, we're gonna do a couple things. We're gonna say draw set font, uh, our font that we've defined in create. Draw set V align, FA bottom. Draw set H align, FA right. That's where we're gonna draw set color. And then we're gonna say draw text, game width minus four, game height, uh, height minus two, version plus string major version plus dot plus string minor version. And then we're gonna say if is dev built. And here, again, I'll explain all this in just a minute. Draw set h align. I'm just gonna separate this right here. Draw set h align fa left and then draw text for game height minus two, and then in parentheses, dev build like this. I'm actually going to move this color uh, up here because it's you know, used for both of them. There, so that looks nice. So what is happening, you know, we're setting the color to, to black, we're setting the vertical line to the bottom. So we start drawing on the bottom instead of the top. Uh, here, I'll actually explain what these do in paint on that real quick. So uh, the V line can be FA top, FA bottom, or FA middle, and the horizontal line, the H line, can be FA right, FA left, or FA center. So if uh, if it's if uh, it's FA top, if it's at the top, right, then when we draw text at this coordinate, it starts drawing from here, right? So that works. Like uh, if it's at the top and we set and we want to draw it here, if it's at top left, then it's going to draw like that, right? Uh, if we say we're going to draw here and we say bottom right then obviously the text is going to start drawing here right so what we did here is we want them to be on the bottom because we're drawing things on the bottom of the screen uh, one of them is at bottom right which is why it's fa right and fa bottom so just right here we're drawing some text right just kind of uh, anchored in the bottom there the other one is fa left and, and, v and fa bottom we're just going to draw text here right so that's it, it's just it's typically where we're anchoring our text, right? Which is why this is useful, because we're doing it four pixels away from the from the uh, right of the screen and two pixels away from the bottom of the screen, and this one's four pixels away from the left of the screen and two pixels away from the bottom of the screen. If we go ahead and run this, then we should see our text that is a bit, at least you should see your text. So we can go ahead and skip the uh, this menu, and there we go, we get dev build in version 0.1 in the bottom there, right? And of course, the, uh, the version 0.1 was from the macros. And yeah, you see what I mean about how they're aligned. Go ahead and close out of that. Now we're gonna actually create our menu. So we're gonna actually move where this is later, but for now, we're gonna go into our create event. Underneath font, we're going to actually start creating our menu. So the menu library is a little bit more complicated to use than the audio library because you know it needs to have more features, um, but it isn't too difficult. So I'm actually gonna create a variable called menu, and it's gonna be equal to instance create depth zero zero. The uh, X and Y coordinates don't matter depth UI menu and UI menu, the object that uh, was included in the menu library. And then we're gonna say with menu. And in here is where we create our menu. So you can do all sorts of things in here like set default blips, right? And then you can say, you know, I wanna use blip, uh, SFX underscore blip or menu underscore blip underscore Z. Or maybe you want to use failed as the uh, the Z blip for each one. And you can see in the bottom right here, you can see blip Z, blip X, and blip move, right? That's that order. Um, but you know we already set our default blips in the menu setting, so we don't need to do that. But if you had one menu in your game where you wanted to change it, you could do it like that. Or you can say set fade and uh, true or false, right? And that's if you want the menu to fade in and fade out when it's created and destroyed. Or you can do set darken background like that, right? Uh, true or false. And that's just if uh, you want to draw a little bit of a transparent uh, black screen underneath the menu to kind of darken it, which we do when it on a pause screen, but not on a title screen, right? All sorts of things like that. 
So basically how to start using this is we call a function called add page, right? And uh, we add a new menu page. And then you don't want to use menu page because menu page is a little bit abstract and it's not going to, basically there are no built-in functions. Uh, you could theoretically extend menu page and create your own page, but I don't think it's super worth it since columns free and rows are gonna basically cover every use case. Uh, so basically, uh, I will go more in depth on how all these work later. I'm not gonna touch on free at all, but I'll explain rows and columns uh, and I'll explain what free is actually, but I won't get into it because it's more complicated. But I'll, again, that'll be all in the uh, menu video that I'm talking about. But basically this is the, organ the organization of your page, right? Mini page free basically means that all of the options you put on this page will have an X, Y coordinate and they're just kind of all over the place, right? Uh, there's no necessary, uh, you know, column structure or row structure to it. Um, there are mini pa uh, page rows, which organizes uh, everything into rows, which I'll use uh, the paint.net again here to, to explain. Uh, basically, we have a menu here and with mini page rows, uh, an option could be here. You could have two options side by side. Another uh, another option here, maybe three options side by side. It would be that kind, this kind of orientation, right? They're all the rows of options. There could be one option in a row, um, but it's organized by rows, right? One entry here, two entries here, one entry here, three entries here. While columns is the other way, right? A columns menu could have uh, an option here, two options here, an option here, three options here two options here, like that, right? Uh, where they're organized into columns instead of rows. One entry, two entries, one entry, three entries, two entries. So you can see different use cases for each of these in, in your game. Uh, so it's these two, and then also a menu free, which is just like, I've got an option here, 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 option here, option here, whatever you want, you know, just, just kind of all madness, options everywhere, right? Or, you know, you could design a, uh, a specific look to your menu, like you can have options here, and an option on this side, and maybe nothing in the middle, or maybe an option down here, you know, like more, more freedom to, to where these options are. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, use menu page rows for now. And then we're gonna title the page. So I'm gonna title this page main, right? You can title whatever you want. And for any, for, no matter what kind of menu page, even if it's free, uh, you just, that's what goes in the constructor here is you just title it. Uh, main, right? And this, this uh, title is important because this tells uh, this is useful for if we want options that jump between pages. And now we're actually not going to put an in parenthesis here. We're going to create two new lines and put an in parenthesis there with a semicolon. Because there's more things we want to do to uh, this page that we've added, right? And this is actually uh, what's called a builder format, right? Uh, and that's because uh, we can actually hit dot and then call more functions like dot add option, for example, uh, right here. And this dot, of course, uh, basically goes against this, um, goes for this menu page rows, right? Of this menu page rows we've created, we can call the add option function, right? For example, right? Uh, and then we can call another thing like dot set or, or, or dot add another option, right? Yeah, the dot set uh, stuff is for the options themselves, right? Uh, but all those things, but you can do new lines, right? So we can organize it and do dot add option, right? And we can put stuff in it. If uh, what I'm saying here about this builder uh, format doesn't make too much sense to you, it doesn't matter too much. Basically, all that you need to know is this is the syntax for creating a menu, right? Add page, new menu page rows, and then the name. We're going to do a line break dot add option. And then in here, we're gonna say new menu option, play. And this is the name of the option, right? And now let's go ahead and do this for a settings and a quit option. So dot add option new menu option uh, settings and then a dot add option new menu option quit just like that right so what we've done here is we've added three menu options they don't do anything yet but we've added three menu options and in fact if we start the game we'll see a menu with these three options that's all we need to do to create a basic menu let's skip that there we go it's got you know play selected even makes the blips when we move up and down we can even plug in the uh plug in the controller and it works with that as well because we uh, we used input check pressed when we uh, when we messed with the mini settings you can press uh, Z or X on the, on the PlayStation controller to make that noise or the circle or the X button on the keyboard to make uh, that noise played in reverse basically the confirm and cancel uh, blips which of course don't do anything yet but we've got a menu right with our box uh, GY black and our uh, oops, Chord's a little finicky. 
uh, with this you know box that we've made and also the font that we've used. And also, if you notice, uh, the uh, unselected items are actually a white to gray, top to bottom gradient. And the select option is a yellow to a little bit desaturated yellow, uh, top to bottom uh, gradient. Uh, so that's where those four colors come in. All right, let's go ahead and get some of these options some uses, right? Um, but it's important to know before we jump into that, uh, just like that this is how it works. So in summary, right, we got an add page, a new menu page rows or columns or free, the title of it, and then we can add options to it, right? Add a play option, add a settings option, add a quit option using this function and a new menu option. It looks kind of confusing, but I promise you copy down what I write. As I explain it, I, it, should, it should make a little more sense to you. And even if it doesn't, it doesn't matter too much. Um, if you have any specific questions about something specific you can do with these menus, uh, I'll try to answer in my in the comments below. Um, but I, I think, you know, I created this. I created this myself, and I haven't really told anybody else about this library quite yet. Uh, so hopefully it is usable. Um, I, I personally like it a lot. I personally think it is quite neat and a quite useful way to create menus. But let's just keep going, and I'm going to keep introducing how to do different things with this menu as we use them in the game, and hopefully it all clicks and it may all makes sense to you. To add things to an option, we're going to use that same dot uh, method uh, builder in this add option, right? So we're going to go ahead and for, let's say for play, we're going to go ahead and hit enter and a tab, and I'm going to say dot set function z, like that, right? And then we're going to say function like that, and then a open brace or open curly bracket, close the curly bracket and an in parentheses, just like that, right? And this adds a function that happens when you press whatever you said the confirm button was in the config, right? So our Z button, right? Basically, whatever code is in this function here will run when you press C, right? So for example, let's say we want to game end, right? And we go ahead and run the game. Then I can press C on settings. But if I press C on play, game closes. So whatever in here will run when you press Z on it, which is very useful. So what we want to happen when we press Z on play is we want to actually start the game, right? So we're going to do what we used to do in that sequence file. We're going to say instance create depth game.data.x, game.data.y, uh, and then zero is what we did, and then player. And then we're going to say room go to game.data.room, just like that. That's the same code as we had in the sequence uh, and sequence splash events. Um, but that means that that should start our game. It should move to room one uh, as soon as we hit Z on the play option. Seems like it didn't work. And I know why that didn't work. Uh, that also probably shouldn't work for you. And the reason is because when we added a new room, we messed with kind of the room indexes, which uh, messed up our save, right? So we're going to go ahead and, and go to our folder here, go to product pixel, and go ahead and delete game.save and oh, you don't need to delete settings that app, but at least game.save. If you don't remember how to get here, it's percent local app data, just like that on Windows. Go down to product pixel and it'll be in here. Now, if we run it, it should work. We might have to revise the way we save our room later on, uh, just in case we add rooms and then that messes up the, uh, the uh, previous saves, like after a game's released or something. Uh, so we'll you know look into that problem a little bit later. But for now, it shouldn't be a big deal. Hit play. And there we go, game start. I can even save the game and close the game, run it again, and when we hit play, it should resume from where we were. Yep, there we are, perfect. So that's it, we're gonna leave that as just for now, but we're gonna, we're gonna tweak it a little bit once we start with the whole pause thing and, and some more advanced stuff in just a little bit in this video. Um, but let's go ahead and do a couple of things. Let's say, um, for example, we can press X all we want on this option, but we don't want it to do anything, right? X is used for, for our menu to go back to a previous page, but we're on the first page of the menu. So we don't want it to make a noise. We're gonna say dot set blip X, right? Uh, and then we're gonna set it to undefined, just like that. That's gonna get rid of the blip X. It's not gonna make a sound when we press X. I'm gonna go ahead and try that out. If I hit X, no sounds. I can go down and hit X on settings and it makes a sound, but it doesn't make a sound on play, which is exactly what we wanted. So let's go down to settings. I'm gonna do a dot set function Z function, just like we did before. I'm gonna leave it empty for now, but we're gonna do a dot set blip X undefined, just like we did with uh, play for the same reason, because this is the first page. Oh, no semicolon. <laughs> Quit, same thing, we're gonna say dot set function Z. 
function. This is just going to game end. And we're going to say dot set blip x undefined. And if we run this, then our quit button should now work. And we shouldn't be able to press x on any of these. Yep, and if we hit quit, there we go. But we did hear blip z for a split second. That wasn't great. Uh, it, you heard it for a split second, it got cut off. So we're actually going to just dot set blip z to undefined for quit as well, right? Because we don't want a blip to play when we're closing the game. We just want the game to close. And maybe if later we add a confirmation message, like, are you sure you want to quit? Uh, we can keep that blip. But for now, because it's just quitting, we want to get rid of that because it sounds really ugly when a blip starts and then it just gets cut off. So now for settings, what we want settings to do is we want it to take, it to, take, take us to another page in a menu, but you don't have any other pages yet. So let's go ahead and create a settings page. How we do that is we just do the same thing as we do with this page, right? We go underneath the add page and we just call it again, add page. Uh, we say new menu page rows. You can also have this be columns or free. You know, you can have each page be a different format. We're gonna call it settings, right? And actually now that it's created, we can just go up to the settings function. We can just say uh, set page settings. And that's what we do. That's all we need to do to get to the settings page. If you run it now, uh, I think it'll work. It might crash, but it might just work and display an empty menu. I don't know. Let's find out. Oh, it displayed an empty menu and it crashed. Perfect. Uh, yeah, so obviously don't create a page with, uh, with no options in it. Let's go ahead and say dot add option. Uh, new menu option game, just to have an option for now, uh, just to test it out. Hit play. All right, hit settings. There we go, and now we've got an option. Uh, we can't move anywhere, and it doesn't do anything, so we're kind of stuck. But there we go, there, there's, a, there's a menu option on, on another page. We've changed pages. So we're actually gonna want a few of these. I'm actually gonna copy and paste this whole option thing. Uh, one, two, three, four, yeah, that should be good. Uh, so we want video, we want controls, we want audio, and then we want back, right? These are all our, uh, all our options. We can go ahead and run, just kind of see how that looks. They should all be in a, in a, in a vertical list though, which uh, could look better. So let's try to utilize our, uh, our, the fact that it's a, it's a menu page of rows system and create multiple, uh, and put multiple of these options in the same row. It's actually very easy to do that. I'm gonna actually delete video and delete audio. So in here where it says new menu option game, just put a comma and then just add new menu option video. Same thing with controls here, comma, new menu option, audio, right? And adding a, a second menu option into our add option thing, we'll just add it to that same row, right? We run it now and we go to the settings page and it should look a little bit better. Yeah, look at that, we got game, video, audio, controls, and back. It's a nice little menu. That's just how you do the, the, the rows thing, it's pretty nice. Uh, I'd actually show you real quick um, what columns looks like. So I'm actually just gonna change menu page rows to menu page columns for both this and this. None of the syntax needs to change, nothing else needs to change. Uh, you only need to change things if you're using uh, free because that uses a different system. But there we go, we certainly have three columns here. And in settings, we have two in each, uh, two, two in the first two columns and one in the second column, and uh, the third column, I mean. So that just works exactly uh, like the rows, but it just, displays it like columns instead, which could be useful for certain like inventory screens or things like that. So they all have their use cases. But for now, I'm just gonna undo both of those to get back to menu page rows. And we're gonna add some functionality to these things. So the easiest thing to do, of course, is back, right? Uh, so for back, we're gonna say dot set function uh, z function. And we're gonna want it to set page to be main, just like that, right? Again, main is the na what we named our first page up here, right? Uh, we're gonna also want to set function x and set function x to also be set page main, right? Because if you press x, we also want you to go back to a previous page. And another thing we're gonna do, right? Uh, because at this point, if we press z, we're gonna hear the z sound. If we press x, we're gonna hear the x sound. But it goes back either way. So I want it to play the x sound when we're going back. So we can do that by saying dot set blip z to be our sfx menu blip x, right? We want it to play the x sound when we press z because we want it to be the sound of going back. And I'll show you how this works. We'll go to the play, we'll hit play and we're gonna, gonna show you how it works.
Hopefully this is all making some sort of sense to you. So you go to settings, and now you go to back, hit Z. Yeah, that was the back sound. X is also the back sound. Perfect, exactly what we want. Go ahead and quit. And let's add some functionality to the other things. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy uh, this dot set function X, and we're gonna put this on all of them actually. So on audio, on controls, on game, on video. Uh, and this comma, by the way, should just be at the end. In fact, I'm gonna put the comma um, yeah, on a new line like that, just like that. Just for organization. Uh, it doesn't really matter where you put these as long as they're there. Uh, so I'm just doing this for organization. So this is all the control stuff and all the audio stuff uh, in the same add option. So now all of these, when you press X, should take you back to the main menu, which is good. That's what we want, right? Because Z will do the thing for the option, but X will take us back to the main menu. If I go over to video and hit X, there we go, we're back to the main menu, which is exactly what we want. We hit the back button, we should go back to the previous menu regardless of what option we were on. Uh, and now actually all of these are gonna take me to a new menu. So I can actually go ahead and add that as well. I can go to the settings here and just copy the set function Z, honestly, paste it here and change this to go to a page called game. Copy that, paste here, video, controls, and audio, just like that. So they all take me to a different page. Uh, and I believe, um, I believe how I've got this set up is if I go ahead and run it and then try to use it, I won't crash, it just won't work. Yep, it just won't work. So if you try to set to a page that doesn't exist, it doesn't crash, it just doesn't work, which is, somewhat useful in development. Now let's go ahead and create some of those pages. So down here, we're gonna go add page, and we're gonna say new menu page rows, and we're gonna do game first, because it's the top of the list. Just like that. And here we're gonna say dot add option, new menu option, and then we're gonna call this one reset save data. And we're gonna, uh, and just leave that be for now. And then I'm gonna go up here, this, uh, this that add option, right? And just copy this whole thing for back and add it here, right? And then change this from main to settings, right? Because the back option, we want to just take us to the settings screen, so the main screen, right? Because one screen back, right? And there we go, now this should have two options, a reset save data option and a back option. And that's all we want on the game screen for now. Let's go ahead and code in this reset save data option. Uh, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna show off the uh, changing the color, right? Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and run the game now just to show you that it's, it certainly added a new page. Settings, game, there we go. Hit X on back, or back here, right? Perfect. So let's go ahead and first of all, let me add this because yeah, I need the set function X, right? Before that, we're gonna add a couple things. We're gonna say dot set color. I'm gonna use BB0000 and 88000, right? Uh, again, uh, the first number is the top and the second number is the bottom of that gradient, right? And this is for when it's unselected. And then we're gonna say dot set color selected, which is the colors for when it's selected. I'm gonna say FF0000, like that. And no second parameter, which means it's not gonna be a gradient, it's just gonna be that solid color. You could, however, put a gradient here. So these are all reds, of course, uh, and because you know reset save data is like, oh, you are you sure you want to do this? This is you know a, a big thing. So yeah, that's 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 how that works, right? <clears throat> go ahead and hit dot set function z, and we're gonna have it be a function. I'm gonna come back to that, and then down here under dot set function x, I'm gonna say dot set blip z to be sfx menu blip success. Now, you can actually have these in any order. The order doesn't matter. I just like organizing them in a specific way just because I think that looks nice. You know, like setting like parameters about it first, setting function second and the blip last. Um, but that is completely arbitrary and does not matter. You can put this, you can do whatever you want with the order. So we wanted to play the success blip because uh, when we reset our save data, we want the game to acknowledge the fact that we have successfully reset our save data. So now for, dot, now for set function Z, we're basically just going to do game dot reset save data, right? Let me make sure that's actually what it's called. Let's go over to game, create. Uh, we've got a, scroll down all the way to the bottom. I can select this. There we go. Function reset settings and reset save data. Yep, there we go. And I believe at the bottom, how we do it is we call reset save data, load then save. 
because we said save data just adds all the defaults. So back over to here, we're gonna have game that reset save data, and then we're going to save the new data that we've generated by calling that. And then we're gonna going to uh, set the page to be reset, which we don't have yet, but I'll I'll I'll, I'll do that um, in just a moment. And before we test this, I'm actually going to go ahead and add this page reset real quick. So underneath game, we can say add page, res um, new menu, page rows, reset, just like that. And we're just going to say add option, or sorry, dot add option, new menu option, save data has been reset. We might change this when we add a dialog box, like, uh, but for now, we're just going to use our option system to, um, to like, confirm to the player, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say dot set color selected to be white and then that gray. So this is the same color as when it's not selected, right? So it doesn't look like the option selected, it's just gonna look like that white, right? Then we're gonna say a dot set function Z and then we're gonna say dot set page uh, back to settings. I say dot set function x, a function that sets page back to settings. And then I'm going to do a dot set blip z to be undefined. And a dot set blip x to be undefined. Right, we don't want it to make the blips when we uh, come off this confirm screen. And there we go, that's it. So let's go ahead and test that, see if it works. I'm gonna go ahead and hit play, move around a bit, and we go to the top corner here. I didn't save, my bad. That's the top corner, hit V to save, uh, close out, and we're going to go try to, um, first of all, hit play to make sure that it's saved. It did indeed. And let's go ahead and try resetting our save data. So we go over to settings and game, and indeed, look, the reset save data is bright red. If we navigate off of it, it's a little bit darker, right? Because uh, it's an important option, we hit Z. We hear that's uh, success, and we doesn't look like that this is selected, it's still white, white, and we hit Z or X, and it takes us back to the settings menu. Perfect, exactly what we wanted, exactly what we coded here. Uh, it works quite well. So that's the game menu, for now at least. You can add a new page, new menu, page, rows. Uh, video, I believe, was the next thing on the list. The video's a fun one. The video's gonna be uh, how we do our screen size. All right, our screen size and our full screen, right? So we're gonna add an option, a new menu option. And uh, here's where we're gonna use some of, some of the other uh, features here. We're gonna call this option scale, all right? And we're gonna do a, let's just create all of these menu options. Oh, hold on, I need to fix the spacing that I've been doing. There we go. The spacing isn't super important, I just, you know. <laughs> broke out of something that I was trying to keep up with and I need to fix that real quick, there we go. Uh, just, just the way I like formatting it all. There we go, tab, perfect. We want a menu option scale, and then we want a dot add option, a new menu option full screen, and then I believe just a dot add option, new menu option back, just like this, right? So the back one should be super easy. We actually just go up here to, actually right here. Uh, nah, nah, we're gonna use this one right here. Uh, copy all of this, go down to here and paste. There we go. That's just you know how our back buttons work. We take it back to the settings menu. Uh, and now for these two, it's gonna be a little more complicated because we actually wanna update the name of these options to be what our current scale and what our current uh, full screen value is, right? Because uh, scale and full screen is actually our name. If you look in the constructor here, uh, name is what we've passed in here, not not text, right? We can pass in text, like I can say, hey, as a second option, which names our menu option full screen, meaning if we use commands to like get a menu option, we can type full screen and get this one, um, but it will display hey. And that lets us change the display name of our menu option without changing the name of it and still being able to access it with code. But we don't need to set the text there because we're gonna actually set it dynamically. So in scale here, let's go ahead and hit uh, dot uh, set, function init, all right, for initialize, right? Uh, and this function will run once when the, when the uh, menu first is initialized. So when it's first created, right? 
uh, we're going to say a var text equals an empty string. And we're going to say if game dot settings dot full screen, then do one thing else do another thing. So we're going to say var max equals the minimum of display get width and hit F12 to get width divided by game width. Again, I'll explain all this after I type it. Display get height divided by game height, just like that. We get the maximum scale we can have, right? Uh, because, for example, if our width of our screen was uh, 1920 pixels, right? That's, uh, this, this function gets the width of your screen, right? 1920 pixels divided by your game width, which is 320. What should we calculate that? 1920 over 320 is 6, right? And the display get height, mine is 1080p, right? Divided by 240, it's 4.5. Right, so the maximum scale we can have is 4.5, uh, because if we try to say, oh, I want to multiply 240 by six, well, my screen doesn't go down 1440 pixels, right? So we want to limit that at 4.5 so that the, the the window doesn't go off our screen, right? So the the, the maximum uh, scale we have on my screen is 4.5, but this is dynamic, so it gets the maximum uh, scale for any specific computer. So if your computer is a 4K screen. Uh, then this will be a higher number for you. If it's a only 720p screen, then it'll be a lower number for you. And it just kind of works so that um, you know, you're not setting the scale higher than your monitor can support. Um, but you can set it as high as your monitor can support if you want to. Next, we're gonna set our text to be equal to casting to string max times game width plus uh, quote space x space plus string max times game height. Just like that, right? And if we break this down, uh, basically max times game width, this is uh, 4.5 times 320, for example. Uh, that's the resolution of, uh, that's the width of the window. Because remember, this is the full screen. This is the, if setting that full screen, right? Then it's the width of the window, right? And of course the height would be the height of your screen. If you for some reason had a vertical screen, right? Uh, what you can do, you know, turn a monitor vertically and just ch change the flip to vertical, uh, then the width would be a limiting factor rather than the height, right? Uh, and it would be the you know with your screen hide your screen and it would you know that's it's gonna it basically is displaying the resolution that you're running the game at uh, since you are in full screen mode is you know we're setting the text to that and then we're gonna say get page uh, video again the name of the page dot get option scale that's this option and we're gonna do a few things we're gonna say dot set color to be eight 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 and four 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 and then dot set selectable to be false, and then we're going to get page video dot y pause equals one. Okay, breaking this down, uh, we're getting this option because right? we can't just like get current option because if we're initializing, we're not selecting scale yet, so it's not the current option. Uh, but we get this option and we set its color to this gray value because we don't want it to be uh, to be changeable. You can't change the scale when you're in full screen mode, and set selectable to false so you can't highlight this right. If selectable is false, you can't uh, press an arrow key to get to this option. It will skip this option, right? It'll basically treat like it doesn't exist. And then this line down here is because this is the first option on the on the uh, on the menu, so uh, it is selected by default. So basically, we're setting y position to be one instead of zero, which is its default. So we're skipping this uh, this scale option if we are in full screen mode, uh, just so that we don't you know start with it selected and then have to deselect it in order to actually do anything. And that's it for the, uh, for the if it's full screen. If it's not full screen, we're gonna do this, uh, basically a very similar thing to this. Actually, I'm gonna copy this var max. It's gonna be a little different though. There we go. Uh, and we're going to actually surround this min in a floor. So if you don't know what a floor uh, function is, is basically if this is a decimal, it just chops off the decimal. If it's 4.5, it's four. If it's 4.95, it's also four. It doesn't round, it just chops off the decimal place. It rounds down basically constantly. There's a similar one called seal, C-E-I-L, short for ceiling, which rounds up. So if you had 4.1, it would take you to five. There's also a round function, right? But we just want floor because we want the maximum integer scale that our screen can support. So for my screen, this one would give us 4.5, and this one would give me 4. We're going to say text equals game.settings.scale is greater than 1, then add that bracket there, 
otherwise two empty spaces. Okay, so again, this is turning a ternary operator. I'm pretty sure I've told you this, I've told you about this before, but this is a Boolean expression. Is gain that setting that, uh, that scale greater than one? Yes, use this value. No, use this value, right? So if it is bigger than one, then we want to add this to the beginning of the text. If it's not, then add this, right? This is just a little arrow, basically. It's an indicator telling the user, hey, you can press left here, right? So if we're not at the minimum scale, one, then you can press left. If we are at the minimum scale, then this is then it's not greater than one, then there's no arrow here, but there's still two, two spaces because uh, we want to you know, not have it be off center. You'll, you'll, you'll see what this is. I'll explain this again kind of once uh, I show you how it works. Let's go text plus equals string game.settings.scale times game width plus x plus string game.settings.scale times game height. Just like that, right? So again, this is a very similar line to the one above to this line up here, right? Um, but instead of the max times game width, it's the current scale times game width and the current scale times game height. Uh, that's the current resolution of the window. And then lastly, text plus equals game.settings.scale is less than max, then space, and then greater than, otherwise two empty spaces. Same thing as this, just the other end, we're adding a, a right arrow if we're not at the max yet, if we can increase, and nothing if we are at the max and shouldn't increase, right? Just an indicator to the to user that you can go left or right to change this option, which we haven't coded yet, of course, but we will. Now, after this whole if else statement, we're going to say get page video dot get option scale, not sackle, scale dot set text to be text, right? So we've set the text of this option to whatever text we've decided, uh, we've created, we've uh, assigned here, right? And that's the entire initialize function. Whew, that was a lot though. So now let's, uh, let's add a couple more functions. We're gonna say dot set function left, right? And then also a dot set function right. So these functions do exactly what you think uh, they do. Uh, when you press the left key or the right key, it calls these functions. And this is actually overriding uh, this being navigable, right? There's also a dot set function up and a dot set function down you can override. Um, but if you override them, then you can no longer use those keys to go between uh, to go between options, right? Uh, so I can use left and right here because this is a vertical only list, right? It's just scale, full screen, and back in a vertical line. So we can use left and right. If I over it up or down, you wouldn't be able to go to a different option, which is a problem, right? So be careful that you don't uh, completely get rid of navigability if you override any of these options. So in that function left, if we've pressed the left button, then we want to, then our user wants to uh, go, uh, make our scale decrease, right? But if our scale is at the minimum, we don't want that to happen. So we're gonna say if, game.settings.scale is equal to one, return, right? If uh, we're already at the minimum scale, which is one, we should return, not do anything. Otherwise, let's go ahead and do audio.sfx play, right, using my audio library, get current option dot blip move, right? And I could just do um, sfx underscore blip underscore move uh, or sfx underscore menu underscore blip underscore move or whatever. Um, but this way, if you change the, uh, the default move blip, it'll use that move blip, right? And we can use get current option here because if we press left on this, then it is the current option, right? Uh, if, you know, we wanted to get this option when uh, we weren't necessarily selecting it, then you'd have to use get page video dot get option scale. Um, but because when you're pressing left, that means you, will, you are on this option, you can use the get current option function and then get its move blip. Uh, and also, this, it's important to note that if you don't have a defined move flip, if you've got an undefined move flip, uh, then this will crash your game. So if you really want to, you can say if not is undefined, uh, get current option blip underscore move, then do it. If you want to do that, then, then that works as well. Um, but because I know that we've defined this, I know we've defined this, uh, I don't need to do that. And then we're gonna game.settings.scale minus minus, we'll decrease that. And then we're gonna say if game.settings.scale is less than one, then game.settings.scale equals one. Now you might think this line isn't important because well, we just checked if it's one and if so, we're gonna return. But while this is going to be an integer number always in game, if you go into the settings file and you change the scale to like 1.3, 
then that will work. The game will open up and it'll scale it up by 1.3, uh, which might, you know, make pixels look weird, which is why you can't do it in game. It's only in the settings file. But if you do do 1.3 and you hit the left key, then it's going to do this, right? And then it's going to subtract one from 1 1.3 and you're gonna get negative 0 0.3, right? I don't want it to be negative 0 0.3. That's a, that's a bad number. So if it's less than one, set it to one, right? So if it's at 1.3 and I hit left, I want it to go down to one, not less than one. Now we actually gotta set our window size. So window set size, game width times game.settings.scale, game height times game.settings, that scale, just like that. And then we're going to do window set position, display get width minus game width times game.settings.scale over two, and then comma display get height. Uh, I spelled display wrong, display get height minus game height times game.settings.scale over two. Now we've done this before, this kind of like uh, window, uh, like uh, display height minus the window height over two to get the center of the screen, right? So this is just setting the position to the center of our screen, which of course is gonna be a different position since, uh, since we gotta carry it, since this actual X and Y coordinate is the top left corner of the window, um, we have to update that when the size is different because the X and Y of the window is gonna be different uh, even at the center of the screen if we've got a different size. Now we're gonna do var text equals game.settings that scale is greater than one, then add that angle bracket. Otherwise, just an empty string. This is the same thing we did up here. And then we're gonna do text plus equals string, game.settings.scale times game width plus x plus string, game.settings.scale times game height. Just like that. And then we're gonna say text plus equals, and then we're just the angle bracket. The reason we're not checking to see if the scale is less than max is because we went left, meaning that the scale is less than max, right? If the scale was max, now it's less than max, so we can go right next time. So we add this little right angle bracket there, and we don't need to check because, yeah, we, we, can, go, we can go right next time. And then we're gonna say get current option dot set text. And then text. Again, we can do get current option because we press left on this option, meaning that this option is selected. And then we're going to say game.settings save because we've updated our settings. Just like that. And that's the entire function. But we're going to have to do a similar thing with right here. Uh, so with right, we're actually going to get the max. So we're going to copy this line right here. It's the same exact line. Copy it and paste it here to get the max. And then we're going to say if, just like this line up here, if game.settings that scale is equal to max, then return, right? We don't want to go right if we are already at the maximum value. Then we're gonna do a lot of the same thing we did up here. We're gonna say audio.sfx play, get current option, dot blip move, and then game.settings.scale plus plus. If game.settings.scale is greater than max, then game.settings.scale equals max. Uh, window, and then actually these two lines are identical, so I can just copy these two lines. And then var text equals, we know that there's gonna be a left angle bracket. We went right, right? So there's gotta be a way to go left, right? We've increased, even if we are at one, we're at two now, so we can go one. So uh, just same idea as this, uh, we can just set it to be the left angle bracket like that. And then text plus equals is actually the same line here. And then we've got to do text uh, plus equals, and it, here's where it matters. Game.settings.scale is less than max, then greater, greater than sign, otherwise two spaces, just like that. And then get current option dot set text text. And then game dot settings dot, uh, underscore save. Just like that, and that is actually uh, the the whole functionality. Uh, but I also want to add just this uh, this this set function x here at the bottom here, so you can go back, and then also a dot set blip z to be undefined. Because if you notice, I didn't add a function z, so pressing z on this option does nothing. So I don't want it to make a noise when you do that. And there you go. That's the entire scale functionality. But I don't want to test this out until we add in the full screen functionality. So bear with me. 
We're going to do the full screen option first, and then we're going to test this all out together. So I'm in full screen here. I'm going to enter a tab. We're going to say dot set function in it function. It's going to be a lot shorter function than the other one. Say var text is going to be equal to game.settings.fullscreen, then less than sign space, full screen, space, space, colon, space, space, windowed, space, greater than sign, right? So you see what we're doing here? Uh, if we're in full screen mode, then this is what the option should be, right? With that little left angle and nothing on the right side. Uh, if it's not full screen, then it's going to be two spaces on the right, on, on the left side, a windowed, and then a little greater than sign on the right side, right? So with either one of those two labels there. And then we're just going to say get page video dot uh, get, get get option full screen. Again, we can't use uh, we can't use get current option here because this is the initialize, so we might not be on this option. In fact, we won't be on this option when initialization takes place. Dot set text and then text. And that's it for the init function, right? That's just to set the text to what it should be. So I'm going to go ahead and do dot set function left. And we'll add in that dot set function right as well. And while I'm here, I might as well just go ahead and, and copy these two and paste at the end, right? Just to say that, you know, give the function x and uh, set the blibz to be undefined, just like the other one. Uh, and now we just have to add in these uh, this left and right functions here. So. Uh, if not game.settings.fullscreen, return, right? This is, remember, if uh, it's going to look like uh, this when it's full screen. So we can go left to make it windowed. When it's windowed, left shouldn't do anything. So if it's windowed, don't do anything. Same thing down here. If game.settings.fullscreen, then return. If we are already full screen, right should do nothing. All right down here, let's do audio.sfx play uh, uh, get current option. Dot blip that move, uh, blip underscore move, just like we did before. Then uh, we're going to actually copy this from here because it's easy and it's a long line. This line right here, the max line, go down to full screen. I'm going to paste it right here. And then we're going to say var text equals game.settings.scale is greater than one, then like that, and then two spaces. Perfectly like that. And then text plus equals string game.settings.scale times game width plus space x space plus string game.settings.scale times game height. Just like that, right? Uh, and then text plus equals game.settings.scale is less than max, then a right angle bracket, otherwise, there. And you might be thinking, wait, this is the scale text, not the full screen text. And yes, you are correct. This is for the scale, right? Um, but remember, if we were full screened, then the uh, the text for scale will be just the current screen size, not the scale that we're going to be at, right? So we gotta, if we're setting it to be window mode, we have to set it to be the uh, the scale that uh, the settings has saved for us, right? So we're setting the text to that. We're gonna go ahead and say get current page. Uh, we can't do get current option because it's not this one, right? It's it's going to be this the scale option, right? Get current page dot get option scale, and then we're going to say dot set color to be f f f f f f a a a a a a, which is the default uh, on selected color. Dot set selectable to be true, and then dot set text. I don't need a semicolon there. Set text text just like that, right? So we're re-enabling the option. Because remember, we disable the option up here uh, if it's full screen, right? The option is disabled. So we re-enable the option if we're no longer full screen. Then we're going to say game.settings.fullscreen equals false. Window.set full screen. Window underscore set full screen false. And then uh, this is actually going to be the same as these two. Window set position, window set size. Paste that right there. And then get current option dot set text to be space space windowed space greater than. And then game dot settings underscore save. Just like that, right? And that's it. So now down here, right, should be very similar. So this shouldn't take too much longer. I'll copy these two lines right here, the audio and this. And we're going to get rid of this floor. 
we don't want the floor for this one. So here's the floor on that side and one of the parentheses over here. Um, because this is the same as the, uh, the max for up here when we have set this max right here, right? For getting the, uh, the resolution when it is full screen. Because we, again, want to set that to be that since we're making it full screen now. We're going to say var text equals string max times game width plus space x space plus string max times game height. This is, again, exactly what we did before. I uh, went in the initialize for the scale. I'm going to say get current page dot get option scale and then dot set color to be that same 888888 and then uh, 444444, right? And then dot set selectable to be false and then dot set text to be text, right? All three of those things, just like we did before, uh, we're disabling the option once we've enabled, once we've enabled full screen mode. Then only a couple other things to do: game settings full screen equals true, window set full screen true, and then we don't need to set the position or, uh, or the uh, or the size because it's full screen. Get current option dot set text to be less than space full screen space space just like that and then game.settings.save. That was a doozy, but that is it. Now we should be able to manipulate our screen size. We can go ahead and hit play and test it out. Manipulate our screen size in, in game. So go to settings and then video. Oh, I hit X, that was my bad, there we go. And we see it's currently 960 by 720. I can increase that to 1280 by 960 and I can't increase it any further because uh, I believe 1280 by 960 is a scale of four calc. Because uh, 240 times 4 is 960, I have a 1080 pixel uh, height to my screen. 240 times 5 is 1200. That's too big for my height, so that's why it is it is stuck there. But I can turn this down all the way to 320 by 240, which is not scaled up at all, right? And yeah, and if I want to go to window and I hit right, it looks like it has crashed. What has happened here? Uh, it looks like I think I put a dot save instead of an underscore somewhere. Where is it? Line 217. There we go. Yep, I said game.settings, a game.settings.save should be game.settings underscore save. My bad. Try that again. There we go. Full screen mode. It even says 1440 by 1080, uh, which is the, uh, the size of the window currently. I hope this is still, yep, it looks like it's still capturing. Oh, no, it doesn't look like it's still capturing. Oh, oh it is, because I, yeah, I clicked out of it. Yeah, so it looks like it's still capturing. Uh, we got full screen and windowed, right? And it just sets the, uh, the, the scale right back. And if you notice, I hit up and down, and I cannot select that scale option anymore. If I hit back, back, and go ahead and quit the game, and let's go ahead and run it again, uh, we see that it actually did save that setting. We should open up and then immediately full screen itself. Perfect. Settings, video, windowed, and then I can change the size to 320 by 240. Uh, go ahead and quit the game and try it, and it should save that scale as well. Uh, and of course, if you go into this uh, this folder here and delete the settings at that, then it will reset to the default um, if you want to do that. All right, that's the video settings done. Uh, let's go on to the next one. All right, down to the bottom here, let's go ahead and do, this one is the controls option, which I'm gonna go ahead and add the page for, but I'm not going to do anything with yet. Uh, so this will be a quick one, just do add page, new menu page rows, controls, and I'm gonna do dot add option, I say a new menu option, keyboard. And for now, I'm just going to add this dot set function X here to, uh, um, oh, that's right, I gotta put it like that. There we go, that's how I format it. Set function X, dodge, and to go back to settings, I'm gonna do add option, um, I'll just copy this honestly, change this to gamepad, and then we're going to go up here and just copy this back option, and add that here, and then add the end to the add page, there we go. Right, yeah, that's it for now. Well, uh, next episode will be dedicated to actually having, uh, having this page work and having these options do things to set controls. Uh, so, you know, you can rebind your controls however you wish, right? That'll be next episode, though. 
Uh, so this is just going to be an empty menu. I won't bother testing it. Uh, you can test it if you'd like, but yeah, it's just a controls menu. Now, the last one we're going to do today uh, before we work on a pause menu, uh, which won't be long, I promise. I know this video is really long already. Uh, add page, new, menu page rows. We're going to do an audio page, right, for our volume. Dot add option. This one is going to be the most complicated page, uh, but once we're through this, we're in the clear, so don't worry too much about it. Uh, we're going to say new menu option. And we're going to call this BGM underscore label a comma, and then we're going to say music. This is the first time we're using this text option in the constructor, but that's just because I don't want to call this music. Otherwise, it might get a little confusing when we're actually changing the things. But this is a label. Uh, and the reason that this is a label is because um, this is actually not going to be a selectable option. It's going to be a different color. It's going to be a bluish color, right, or a cyan color. Uh, and it's just going to be above the actual like number slider. And that's so we don't have to put like BGM and then a number. Uh, on the uh, on on the in in thing like with the scale it wouldn't matter because you know the the number is obviously a, a resolution for this we want this to say music and then we want the thing underneath it to be a number with some greater than or less than signs on either side so that you can you know scroll left and right so this one's a really easy option we're just gonna go ahead and say uh, dot set selectable to be false dot set color one uh, cc nine e one I'm going to say 18A9BC, just like that, right? That's the color I picked. And then we're going to say dot set function in it, uh, function. And then, oh, you know what? It looks like I uh, my code here used a, a, a weird thing for a previous thing. Actually, here we can say select option. I forgot that this was a thing I added. Uh, BGM audio. So. What this does, if you notice down here, it says option and then page optionally, right? So the option is BGM, which we haven't created yet. And audio, this should be capital, um, is the page that we're selecting it on, right? We're selecting on audio because each page actually has its own variable for what's being selected. And that's how we remember, like, you know, when we went back from the settings menu, we were still highlighting settings, right? So on the audio page, we're going to select the option BGM. And I'm actually going to go up to our video setting real quick because I forgot. I guess I never changed this when I added that as an option to the init and for scale right here. And we're going to say get page video to y position equals one. We're actually going to say select option full screen and then video, right? So on the video page, we're going to select the full screen option, which is this one right here. Hopefully that makes sense to you why we changed that, but it is, it is a nicer way to do it. I forgot I added that function. Go all the way back down to the audio. Uh, and that's actually it for this option because it's a label. And then now we're going to add that BGM option. New menu option B, uh, BGM. Or not that, sorry. And then we're going to say dot set function init function. Brief detour, guys. We're going to change a little bit in game. So go back to the game object and the create event. In the reset settings function, uh, after we've done this, I want to uh, basically set the global um, an audio, set the, set the global sound to work. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to go to audio real quick, um, mostly so I can remember this. Up here, I've got these global volume vari variables that are meant to be connected to your global volume. Uh, and I might have a better function for that uh, eventually in a later version of my audio library because it is a little bit confusing, I'm realizing now. Um, but this GB underscore vol underscore BGM, uh, I'm going to go over to game and after reset settings, I'm going to say audio dot GB underscore vol underscore BGM equals, and what do I have here? I've got their one by default. I closed it already, didn't I? Oh no, it's right here. Yeah, they're one by default. So I'm going to say equals settings dot vol BGM over 100, right? And I'm going to do that with all of them, right? So SFX and BGS, ball SFX and BGS, right? And I'm going to copy this, and I'm also going to put this in the load data, right? So the settings load. When we've successfully loaded our settings, I'm going to go ahead and paste that right there, right? And then I think we also have to do it here. Yeah, wherever we got the settings JSON parts, just those three spots. We go ahead and set it just so that it, it you know actually updates that with what we want. And I think that's everything. Yes, that is everything. So there we go. That's all we need for game. 
we can go ahead and go back to our RMH title. And uh, in here, we're actually going to want to just do var text equals game dot settings dot vol bgm greater than zero. Then we're going to use this less than, uh, and then otherwise we're going to use these two spaces just like we did before. Uh, again, if it's you know if we have more than zero volume, we can go down. If we have less than, if we have zero volume, then uh, nope, uh, we have to <laughs> go up only. So text plus equals string game dot settings dot vol bgm and then text plus equals game dot settings dot vol bgm is less than hundred then go right otherwise empty right and then we say get page audio dot get option bgm dot set text to this text right to whatever our current bgm is. I'm going to say dot set function left function. And here we're going to say we're going left. So if our volume BGM is equal to zero, then return. Rich run return. There we go. I can spell. Then audio to SFX play. Get current option, just like before. Dot blip move. A lot of the similar ideas here. Game dot settings dot vol bgm minus equals ten. It's just increments of 10, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, all the way to hundred. You can have this be one if you really want to, but I think ten is it's a nice number. And you can also set it in between uh, tens if you use the settings file itself. If game dot settings dot vol bgm is less than zero, then game dot settings dot vol bgm equals zero. Again, same idea as uh, we did with the scale. Audio. Oh, uh, we actually want to do what audio dot gb vol bgm equals game dot settings dot vol bgm over one hundred, and then I think we also want to call audio dot bgm update gain. Let me just double check that real quick. Bgm update. Yeah, yeah, that's what we want to do. So go back to RMA title. We want audio.bgm update gain afterwards. This just uh, updates all the, the currently playing background music uh, to be the, uh, the the volume that it should be at. And since we've changed this global volume BGM, uh, I think there's, uh, just so you know, an audio.bgm set global volume. Yeah, there's a, which is you know the same thing. Uh, and in which case you would need to call, you know, let's just do that actually. Let's get rid of update gain. Uh, and instead of that line, we'll delete it in a second. Uh, audio dot bgm underscore set global volume game dot settings dot vol bgm over one hundred, just like that. I won't change it in the other one though because we don't need to update the gain. But this function should update the gain for us. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so there we go. So just audio dot bgm set global volume game dot settings dot vol bgm over one hundred. Oof. All right. Uh, and then we want a var text equals game dot settings. In fact, I actually think this is. Uh, basically the same as this. I'm going to copy this, paste it here. The only difference is uh, we actually don't need to check this. Oh, get rid of that. Uh, there's just two of these. Um, the only difference is we actually don't need to check if well, we can go right. This can just be that because we've, we've decreased the volume. Uh, and then lastly, we can change get page and get current option to or get option to get current option. Just like that. And then at the bottom here, we can say game.settings underscore save. And that's it for left. Let's go ahead and do a dot set function right function. And here, very similar ideas. If game.settings.volbgm is equal to 100, then return audio.sfx play get current option that blip move game.settings.volbgm, uh, I spelled settings wrong, plus equals 10. If game.settings.volbgm is greater than 100, game.settings.volbgm equals 100. And then audio.bgm underscore set global volume to be game.settings.volbgm over 100. 
var text equals less than because we know we can go left if it's gone right. And then text plus equals game dot settings uh, dot vol. Sorry. Text plus equals string game dot settings dot vol bgm. And then text plus equals game dot settings dot vol bgm uh, is less than 100, then a write option. Otherwise, two empty spaces. Get current option dot set text text. And then game dot settings dot uh, underscore save. Oof. All right, so that's one option. We're gonna have to do this exact whole thing uh, from BGM label to BGM twice more, but we can use a bunch of copy and paste. But before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and test this out. Uh, so to test this out, I'm gonna go over to the RM title, right? I'm gonna go to creation code. And I'm actually actually gonna go to room one creation code, oh, not instance creation order, uh, creation code, and just cut all of this stuff. Uh, and go to room title and paste it in there, right? So the, now the BGM will start on the title screen. Go ahead and run the game. There we go, we got the BGM. Go down to audio. And there we go, listen, the, the, the audio, the music did end, end did decrease as we went down. We can see this nice little blue uh, blue header for this, uh, for this option right here. Or more of a cyan, I suppose. And I can't go up and select it. Uh, I can uh, go up and down, and it seems to be making noise, which uh, shouldn't be an issue because we're going to add more options. Uh, that only happens because there is another option in the vertical, uh, in, in, like in the column. Um, it's just not selected, so it's kind of looping in on itself. Uh, just so you know how you would do that. So if this was all that was on the menu and you wanted to fix that sound, you could say dot set, um, move, uh, set up enabled, I think it is. Yeah, set up enabled and then false, and then dot set down enabled, false, right? And now you can't go up and down, right? It disables those uh, those abilities for this option. And now it's not making noises, right? Not making noises when you go up and down. But we're not gonna use those because we are, do want more functions. We do want, uh, I'm sorry, more options. So we do want to be able to go between them. Hit F12. So I'm actually going to go ahead and, and copy this entire add options thing. Copy, then enter, paste, enter, paste. Right. So we've got you know a lot of code here that we gotta we gotta change real quick. So the first one, BGM label, BGM. This one I'm gonna have a little space here in a comment so that I know that this is where it starts. This BGM label should be SFX label. This should be SFX. This should be SFX. Uh, this should be SFX. Make sure you make sure you hit all of these ones that I'm doing. Basically, every instance of BGM should be SFX. So just watch closely. Volume SFX. SFX here. SFX here. SFX here. Down here we got vol SFX. Uh, down here we got vol SFX. Here's SFX. Here is SFX. Uh, this is SFX set global volume. Vol SFX. Well, SFX, SFX, just like that, right? Now for right, similar thing, SFX here. SFX, 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 SFX. All right, uh, and now let's go over for this one. This should be BGS, right? So this is BGS label. BGS. Oh, and also I forgot to change this. Let's go up to uh, SFX real quick. Uh, this music should actually be sound effects. And now down here, BGS, this label should be background. Did I call it background or background sounds? Background sounds is what I called it. There we go. All right. <clears throat> BGS, 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 BGS. Uh, that's SFX play it. BGS. Oh, nope. BGS. 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 BGS here as well. Uh, BGS here. BGS here. 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 And here. Here as well. Here as well. And I think that's all the places. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and control F, BGM. And I should only find BGM here, 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 here. I'll go next, right? 
You should only find them in the BGM section. Perfect, try again. Nope, it moved back up. So we got all of the BGMs. Hit play and let's see if this works. Oh, I still didn't add a back option. I'm gonna actually do that real quick before I test it. Hit stop. Uh, really easy, I can just copy this back option and paste it at the bottom. I'm also gonna get rid of this comment here. Uh, paste right here. All right, now, oh, you know what? I also forgot to add a, uh, a function x. So let's copy this dot set function x and paste it uh, on all of these uh, functions. Not the labels, but just the, uh, just the uh, BGS, SFX, and BGM. There we go, those three spots. Hit play. And we should be uh, should be done with the uh, with the title screen for now. Get settings and go over to audio. And there we go. There's all three of them. We can turn down. Oh, didn't seem to work. Audio dot underscore volume. Ooh. Okay. So it looks like I messed up in the audio library. Don't worry. Um, I will have a fix for this. <laughs> Uh, don't worry, you should not have this error. If it's in the audio library, that means I messed up and I'm gonna go ahead and fix this here. Um, but uh, the version you'll download, uh, sh 1.2, should still be the correct version. I'll go ahead and re just replace the version on there because there's no need to have this broken version up, especially when I just uploaded it today and nobody touched it yet. Ah, that's weird. Yeah, this should be volume. I messed up with SFX too. No, just BGS. All right, uh, I have fixed the error um, and it should be totally fine. Uh, it should have just worked for you, but let's go ahead and go back and uh, check it out now. So audio, it is indeed going down. Uh, we don't have any background sounds playing, so it's not really you know convenient to test this. Um, but let's go ahead and turn down the sound effects a bit. So there was a little bit of an issue with the music where the music started playing at normal volume, which I'll have to go and see uh, why that is. Um, but indeed the sound effects are changing volumes. So if I set this at zero, or let's set it at 10. Hmm. All right, after some doing, uh, I fixed a couple things wrong with both the menu and the audio system, honestly, uh, and everything should be fine. Uh, the versions you download shouldn't have a problem. However, there is one issue that we do have, and that is this didn't work. Uh, here, I'll show you what we've got right now. Um, of course, I'm in the game fun uh, object right now. Uh, the music's at full volume, and the sound effects are at full volume. And then once we update the sound effect, then now all of the sound effects are correct. Same thing with updating the music. Now all of the sound effects are correct. It just wouldn't. It just doesn't update it initially. Uh, and that is because right here, audio hasn't been created yet necessarily. Right, game was created before audio, even though we threw audio in the room. Uh, so when game is created, audio isn't here yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete all of these. Uh, all of these things. Where is it? The three locations that we added that in. Uh, that, and here, and right here. Delete those. Uh, and then what we're gonna have to do is we're going to have to, we're gonna go to step event. So let's go ahead and, and uh, create a step event. Uh, add open event, step, step, just like that. We'll create a step event right here. Uh, and in here, we're going to do audio dot bgm set global volume to be settings dot vol bgm over 100 audio dot sfx set global volume to be settings dot vol sfx over 100 and audio dot bgs set global volume to be settings dot vol bgs over 100 just like that uh, and then because of that we're going to go back into our um rm oh, what is wrong here? Oh, there's a colon there. It should be a semicolon, of course. Uh, let's go back to RMH title, uh, and we're gonna have to change a couple things. I'm gonna hit F12 to get rid of all that junk. Uh, so let's start down here at BGS. Um, basically, and we should, wherever it says audio BGS set global volume, just get rid of that line. We don't need it, because we're setting this, and then the game will, will take care of that every step. So get rid of all the BGS set global volume. Uh, up here, SFX set global volume. And up here in BGM, BGM set global volume. There we go. And that should fix the problem. One of the other problems that was happening was that the menu system wasn't properly detecting my audio library, which I went ahead and fixed. Um, but there we go. Now the now volume is correct right off the bat. 
And of course, as we've seen, we started the we restarted the, the game a few times, and all our settings did save, which is really nice. So there we are. There's a. Oh, that's a that's a working uh, audio screen. So, so yeah, so we got this is all our settings menu. We got you know game reset save data, controls doesn't do anything yet. We're gonna do that next time. Audio works well. We can change the music volume, the sound effects volume, and the background sounds volume. We have the video where we can change the resolution of the screen. It's pretty nice. So now there's just one other thing that I wanted to do real quick um, on the main menu before we can jump into the pause menu, and it's kind of goes hand in hand. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this menu out of RMH title. We're gonna set up a script for it. Uh, because one thing we could do is we could just also have this code uh, in player or in game or wherever we want to create the menu, uh, and then just have to change it in two places if we want to change anything, but I don't like that idea. So instead, I'm gonna literally take everything from line six onwards, our menu onwards, and we're gonna just cut it, right? Uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and go into our sidebar in scripts. Right click, create script. I'm gonna call it scr underscore menu underscore pause. And here we're gonna do function menu pause create, just like that, right? And we're gonna paste everything in here. I'm gonna select it all, except for the first line, and hit tab just so that it's all, you know the proper indentation. Oh, I, I need to tab this and this as well. Yep, there you go. Tab all of that. Hit F12 so this can see this better. Uh, and yeah, there you go, there's our mini code. Uh, and now if we go back to our RMH uh, title, where is it? Oh, it's right here, actually create. Uh, we can just do um, cr uh, menu underscore pause underscore create. And if you run the game, uh, the pause menu will, you know, it'll, it'll just be there. Uh, it will be exactly as it was a minute ago. Perfect. Uh, so now let's go ahead and go to SR, SR mini pause and let's change some things. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add some arguments here. So we're gonna have an underscore is title and underscore fade in equals undefined. I'm gonna just say fade actually, not fade in. Um, and then we're gonna say fade question mark question mark equals not underscore is title. So basically, if fades undefined, if it wasn't passed, then uh, then we're gonna set it as title. That's what this question mark question mark equals means. It's basically a shorthand for fade equals fade question mark question mark not is title, right? So if fade is undefined, uh, then use this value, right? And that's what this is, right? So set it to not is title if it's undefined. Uh, is title is gonna be true if we're on the main menu and false if we are pausing from the game. Uh, so now. Uh, right here, before our add page, we are going to have a set fade in, or sorry, a set fade, my bad, to underscore fade, and a set darken background to a not is a title, right? So if we're not in the title, we do want to darken the background. If we are in the title, we don't want to darken the background. Uh, and then we actually want to use is title up here. We want to actually, in play, we want to say dot set function in it function, you know, before we do our Z stuff, right? And we're going to want to refer to is title in here. Unfortunately, uh, because of how game maker scoping works, we actually can't access is title in here. We notice it turns blue instead of yellow, and it will crash. It'll say it's not defined. Uh, so we have to do a little bit of a cheat here. Uh, but under dark and background, I'm going to use two underscores and say title, and have it equal to is title. Right. So now this is a variable that's stored in the menu. Uh, it's two underscores. Nothing's going to access it. So it's just kind of like a junk variable that we can store our is title variable. And then this we can actually access here. It's not a great solution, uh, but it's a little hacky one we can use for now. So it's an underscore, underscore, two underscores, title equals is title. And then down here we can say if is title in our play, right, for init. Uh, and we're gonna have an else as well, right? So uh, we wanna do different things with the play option if we're on the title screen or not. And they actually wanna do the same thing with the quit option, which but we'll get to that in a minute, right? So if it is the title, then we're going to go ahead and say, well, the option we're, we're dealing with is going to be equal to get page main dot get option play, right? So this is just so that we can, you know, mess with this option a few times. Then we're gonna say var started equals game dot flag dot get game has started. Now, do you remember when we set up our save system? I'll actually pop over to game real quick uh, right here in create. Uh, and in our little settings reset, or sorry, save data reset, where is it? Save load, up the top somewhere, there we go, reset save data. Uh, our initial flag is game has started is false, right? And this flag tells us if we've started the game or not, right? 
So we want to actually see, hey, has the game started? Has, has we, have we started the game before? And if we have, if started, then we're going to set our text to be continue. And if we haven't, we want to set our text to be new game, right? So now see, it's a different text depending on if we've started the game before or not. And down on else, we're going to say get page main, because remember, this is this is uh, this else means that we are this is a pause menu. Uh, we're in game. We are not on the title screen. Uh, get uh, get page menu. Get option play. Dot set text. Uh, resume. So this will resume the game. It'll no longer be paused when you hit this option, right? Uh, so this just changes the name of the option. That, well, not the name. The name is play, but the text of this option to be continue, new game, or resume, depending on if you're on the title screen or in game, and depending on if you have started the game before or you haven't. Uh, and now to do this, we actually want to go down to function z real quick and add a couple things, because uh, currently we have no way of setting game has started. But right here, we're going to say game.flag dot set game has started to be true, right? So once we start the game, game has started is true, right? All right, and uh, now actually in this function z, we also don't want to do this all the time. We only want to do this when it's title screen, right? So we're going to go ahead and do if underscore underscore title, just like we did up here, right? And we're going to put all of this inside that, right? We want to do this if it's the title screen. Otherwise, if it's not the title screen, so this else happens if we, if we press this button while we're in game. So all we want to do is we actually just want to say destroy. And destroy is a function uh, uh, for from the menu that just destroys. You know, we're gonna do control middle click. It just it just sets pending destruction to be true, which uh, I've gotten here. Um, the reason I've got a variable there is just so that it can fade out if uh, fade is true, right? So that's it for play. Now let's go down to quit, right? Uh, and we you know we don't want the game to end if we hit quit on in game. We actually want this to be returned to the title screen button instead. So how we do that is uh, we want to do a set dot, uh, dot set function init just like uh, we did for play function, there we go. And then we want to in here do an if underscore underscore title and an else, just like with play. You know what, actually, we don't need this. We can just do if not is title, not title, right? If not title, because if it is the title, then we can just have it be the quit button, right? It'll just say quit. Um, but if it's if we're not on the title screen, we want to change it. We want to say get page main dot get option quit dot set text to be title screen, right? So we're setting text to be title screen if we're in game. Uh, that's it there. And now we're going to go ahead and in function z, we're going to say if it's a title screen, then we'll go ahead and game end. Otherwise, we're going to return to the title screen. So how we're going to do that, uh, this might change throughout the game, but we're going to start with uh, destroying all of the persistent things except for audio. So I mean, that, that's the player in the camera, right? We're going to instance destroy the player. Oh yeah, also we're not destroying game either. And instance destroy camera. And then we're going to stop the BGM, audio dot BGM underscore stop 500. And we're also gonna say audio dot BGS underscore stop 500, or stop all 500, right? Fade out all of that, and uh, you know, just be safe. We're gonna say audio dot bg dot sfx stop all five hundred as well, right? This is of course the fade time, so half a second, five hundred milliseconds. Stop all the sounds that are going on, and we're going to say room go to rm title, right? Go back to the title screen, and that's all we need, right? And if you wanted to do an auto saving system or like a save system where like if you just quit the title, then it saves right then and there, you can also add a game dot save right here. Uh, we're going to end up using save points, uh, so I'm not going to do that. And we've got that V key. Um, but if you wanted to do it where it's like, it just saves your place, you quit the title, your place is totally saved, uh, then you can put a game.save there, and then it just will save the game. But I'm not going to do that, because I want to have save points instead. All right, and now also here, this blip Z, we want blip Z to actually be uh, be the correct blip if we uh, if we are on the, if, if, we are, if we're not in game, if we're not on the menu, right? So we're actually going to change this to, we can do this inline, underscore, underscore, title. If, it, if, if we're on the title, then undefined, else, blip z default. And we can use this blip z default here um, if we want to, to just like, because, you know, blip z default is, is whatever the default blip z is for this, uh, this, um, this menu. Like if we were up here at the top and I said set default blips, then whatever we set here would be in the blip z default. So you can use that here 
to say you know what libz normally would have been and honestly we probably should have done that for when we set that when we set that, um libz to would be blip x we could have said blip x default which we might go back and change but i'm a little too lazy to do that right now so i'm not too worried about it now one more thing i want to do is i want to make it so you can't reset the save data while you're in game so let's go over to uh game right here reset save data uh, and we're going to change it a little bit because I don't want to be able to reset the save data while we're playing the game. So basically, uh, we're going to, underneath the color selector, we're going to say dot set function in it, right? Function. And in here, we're going to say if not is title. Sorry, if not title, not if not title with two underscores like that. Uh, then we're going to say uh, get page game dot get option reset save data and then dot set color to be uh that grayed out one that we used before eight 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 four 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 and then we want to say dot uh set selectable to be false and then we want to say um dot is that is that all we want to do what did he do for for uh for full screen yeah that's it I think there's also a uh, set text. Yes, we don't need set text. Just those two. Um, and then, oh yeah, there shouldn't be a semicolon there. Just on the second one. And then after that, because uh, it is the first option on the screen, we're gonna say, um, what is it? Select option was the, yeah, select option uh, for the second option, which is back on the page game, right? So we're not in the title, then go ahead and, and set the option to back and you know gray out uh, reset state data because we don't want to do that uh, when we're in game. And Z, uh, we can leave this as is. Uh, there's no reason not to. Uh, if you really wanted to, you can say if underscore underscore title and surround all of that. Uh, but because it's not selectable in the first place, uh, there shouldn't be any, any worry because we can't select it to have this function be called anyways. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, if we run it, actually nothing will happen because um, in fact we'll actually crash because we have to go to uh, RMH title right here and we actually have to we have to say true because uh, I don't think I've got a default. Yeah, it just is title. So we are on the title, so I can put a true here. If we run it, it'll work just like before, except for the whole new game thing, which I'll actually show off real quick before we uh, before we uh, make the pause menu work. Um, but it says new game and it says new game even though we have some save data because we never set that flag. I'm gonna go ahead and delete our save data anyways. Um, oh yeah, that's one other thing I've gotta do. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll show off what that is in a second, but let's go ahead and start the game. And, uh, and let's go ahead and restart the game. So now it should say continue instead of new game. And indeed I am continuing. However, if I reset the save data, this is the other thing that I forgot to add in because we, uh, we coded reset save data before we coded this. Um, but I'm gonna go reset save data and now continue is still there. In fact, uh, we have to restart the game in order to get to say new game. There we go, right? So this is actually an easy enough fix. So I'm gonna do it real quick. Uh, basically just in reset save data, which is right here, right? In the function Z, uh, right before setting the page reset, we are going to say get page main dot get option play. So get that play option and we're gonna set the text to say new game, right? So set the text back to new game because our save data is gone and that will work. Um, I will test it in just a minute, but before I test it, I'm going to go ahead and add the pause screen support. All right, so to do that, let's go ahead and go to our game uh, object again. Where is it? Uh, game. In our step event, after we do this, or actually, you know, let's do before we do this. Um, let's do an if input check pressed pause, all right? So this is our escape key by default, or our um, our you know start on a controller on PS4 specifically. The one I have, it's the options button, uh, and then we're gonna say if not. Oh, actually, wait. And then I think we're actually gonna create a couple new variables. So let's go over to create real quick, um, and it's not in settings. It's just gonna be up here. Yeah, yeah. So in, in create, we're gonna above settings. We're gonna say here menu locked equals false and pause for menu equals false. And then we're gonna add a function is paused. I spelled paused wrong, is paused. 
and we're going to return pause for menu. We're going to have other pause criteria later, like a pause for dialogue or pause for battle or those kind of things for different kinds of pauses. And we'll update, we'll update is pause for, you know, oring those together and have different is pause functions later. But for now, this is the only pause we care about, so we're going to do that. So menu locked is false by default, pause for menu is false for, by default. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I am going to actually set this to true by default. So the reason is menu locked is going to be a variable that tells us, hey, can we open a menu? Can we close a menu? If there's no menu open and it's true, then we can't open a menu. If there is a menu open and it's true, then we can't, then we can't close that menu with the escape key, right? Um, so, uh, but if it's false, we can open and close the menu. So obviously on the title screen, we want it to be locked. In game, we don't want it to be locked for a pause menu. And then pause for menu is just like a, you know, game logic shouldn't move if the menu is, is open. Uh, so let's go over to the step event. And in this if statement we just created, we're going to say if not menu locked, or menu is not locked, uh, then we're going to say if pause for menu, which basically means, hey, is there, a, is there a menu open? Then we can say with UI menu, this will run for every instance of a menu on the screen, we're going to say destroy. And then we're going to say pause for menu equals false. And then else, we're going to say menu pause create. And we're going to say false, right? Because it's not the menu, not the title screen this time. And we say pause for menu equals true. Uh, so that's basically it. But now I've got to, uh, we've actually got to go back into our um, our code here for the, I know this is a little jumping around, this SCR menu pause, just to deal with the, the menu locked option. So these are both going to be on the first page. Uh, we're going to have to change both uh, the play function Z and the quit function Z. So for play, basically, if it is the title, then uh, before we go ahead and create uh, the player and all that, but after we set the flag, we're going to say game.menuLocked equals false. It's true by default, but once we start the group, it's game, we want to stop the menu locking. And we can immediately re-enable menu locked with a cutscene if we want, but we don't want it to be uh, locked anymore for starting the game uh, because, you know, you might be resuming, and if you're resuming, uh, or like, you're sorry, uh, continuing, right? You've already have saved data, then there might not be a cutscene, and you might want to be able to use the menu immediately. So, you know, we're just going to not worry about having to unlock the menu later. We're going to unlock the menu now because uh, we're starting the game. And then if we have a cutscene, then that cutscene can go ahead and lock it for us. Uh, so that's actually all we need to do for there. And then we go down to our quit, uh, our quit option. And basically, uh, if we're not on the title, because if we're on the title, it just ends. But if we're not on the title, then before we stop the music, we're going to say game.menuLocked equals true because we're returning to the title screen. So we're going to lock the menu again, we're returning to the title screen, and then we're going to say game.pause for menu is going to be false because we're resetting whether or not we're paused for menu, right? Because we don't need to worry about the game logic stuff while we're on the title screen. And that should be it. So if we go ahead and run the game, uh, we should be able to create a pause menu. Let's go ahead and press C, new game, and we can hit escape. And there we go. See, we created a pause menu. However, we didn't actually pause the game, and that's because we just added the pause uh, the pause booleans, and we forgot to check for them. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that real quick before we continue testing. Uh, very quick, just go to the player, uh, and then full screen this, hit F12. Um, basically, um, we'll do a player state machine soon. Um, but for now, let's just go here. No, let's actually just go above all this and say if uh, game dot is paused then exit, right? If uh, the game's currently paused, then let's go ahead and exit and uh, not run any of this code. That'll work for now. Uh, we're gonna actually do a state machine in a couple a couple episodes, uh, probably two episodes, uh, and uh, we'll revise that a little bit. But for now, there we go. And you notice it still said new game because we didn't save the game yet, right? We didn't save the game. So when we restarted the game, it didn't have a save file, right? But if I hit V, then it'll save the game, right? Now let's go ahead and hit escape. We got a resume option. You see it ni nicely fades in and out and darkens the screen. Resume option works fine. Uh, I don't have the X option doing anything, uh, but and I'm not going to, uh, but if you wanted X to like resume the game automatically, no matter where we were, which I might implement later, uh, then it should be pretty easy for you to know how to do that. Just go ahead and, you know, for all of the options on this screen, add a dot set function X. Uh, if not title, then go ahead and do the same code as when you press Z with, uh, with resume, which is just destroy. So it should be pretty easy for you. Uh, title screen, 
takes us back to the title screen. It stopped the music, and then it restarted the music because the title screen plays the music, not the game. And it has continue, right? If I go ahead and hit title screen, and I get settings, and then I go reset save data, and I try it again, and then hit title screen. Hmm, okay, I see what's going on here. There's a little bit of a bug, and that bug is it says continue still, but if we hit quit and we hit play, then it's gonna say new game. Right, it says new game. And that is because we have the flag set in memory, but we never saved it to a file. So let's fix that real quick. Sorry, I know there's a couple bug fixes still, and it's a very, very long video, but uh, hopefully, hopefully this is good after not getting a video for a while. Uh, so how we're gonna fix this actually is in our code right here in the SCR menu pause. Uh, when we return to the title screen, which is right here, we are also we are immediately we're also going to say game dot reset save data and then game dot load. All right. So this is what happened when we started the game originally. We reset the save data to get defaults and then we try loading from a file. Right. That way it basically gets rid of all the save data that we currently have uh, in memory and re and loads whatever save data was saved to a file, right? And if again, if you, if you still want exiting to the menu to save the save data, then you don't need this. You can just say game that save because it's all gonna be part of the file and it's gonna say continue. Um, but if you're not auto-saving and you're using uh, save points and such, uh, then you can just do game that reset save data and game that load here. Uh, and that should just work. So let's go ahead and try this out. If we do, um, New game, and then title screen. Yep, there we go, look at that. I know the audio sounded a little bit weird because we've got the same music playing and I can shut off the music and restart it, right? Um, but that's exactly what's happening there. We can go settings. We can't reset save data, I can't even select it. Um, I can go controls, go audio. I can change the sound effects and the music volume right here can change the video, the, the resolution size, all of that right here. It's pretty nice. Uh, oh, and it looks like we can't move. Oh, and I hit escape again, now we can. Ah, yep, one more bug. This is the last bug though for the, for the day. Uh, and that is when we hit resume on the play option, we didn't get rid of the, uh, we didn't get rid of the, the pause for menu, right? So we have to fix that. Uh, for set function Z, um, we are do 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 right here in else before we destroy we're going to say game dot pause for menu equals true sorry equals false like that right i right hear we're going to say game dot pause for menu equals false right so if we're not in the title screen and this is again this is the pause menu specifically right this isn't uh this isn't like another menu and you know if another menu is up then we wouldn't want this menu to work uh, so yeah, so we're gonna stop pausing for the menu uh, when we close this, and that should work. Go ahead and say new game, and hit resume, and there we go, right? Perfect. It works perfectly well. well. Uh, and now before we end this video, I'm gonna show you one other cool thing, uh, just cause I, I forgot to add it earlier, I kinda wanted to like, wiggle it in because I think it's a pretty cool thing. Uh, but just another example of, you know, checking if it's title screen and cool little neat features we can do. Uh, is there's another fe function in here that we can override called dot set function underscore, um, I believe it's called selected. And this function will run every step as long as it's selected, right? So I can do a neat little thing uh, like, hmm, let's say if we're on the title screen and we're all, I'm also going to say and game dot settings dot full screen equals false or just not game that settings at full screen like that, right? So if we're on the test screen and it's not in full screen, then I'm gonna say var x equals, I'll explain this in a second, it's just a fun little thing. Uh, when did it get x uh, plus i random range negative two to two, var y equals window get y plus i random range negative two to two, and then window set position x and y. And remember this is uh, under the quit option. Basically, you know, if we're on the title screen and if we're in the windowed mode, then it's gonna get the current position of the window and it's gonna add or subtract a little bit of random numbers to it and then set the position. So the window's gonna kind of do a shake thing if we're on the title screen specifically and we're not in full screen mode. So you can see you can really do anything with this menu system. Look at that, the menu's vibrating furiously. It's pretty cute actually. Go ahead and hit new game. And it doesn't do that here. 
And it also can't do that if we're in full screen, so I can show you that. Perfect, right? So there we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this back to windowed and quit out the game. And that is it for this episode. That took so long. Uh, that was a very long video. Hopefully, I, hopefully you guys don't mind. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and commit our changes before we go ahead and end this off. Um, but you know, we've done a lot today. We have um, we've added the, my audio library, added my menu library, and created an entire pause menu system. Uh, I am quite proud of us. Uh, remember, next time we are going to uh, look, you know, a little bit more in the menu. We're just going to add a control rebinding screen. Um, we're just going to like use the input library and my menu system just to kind of have a little bit of a, of a rebind screen in that control system so that you can bind your own controls and uh, change the controls if you don't like the controls that I've decided to use uh, and as a player. And then I think after that, we're going to get more into some game stuff. This is, you know, still some, some UI stuff that we're doing now. Uh, so let's go ahead and do get uh, a status, see what we've done today. Done quite a lot, kind of crazy. Uh, get add dash dash all, that's al. There we go. Then we want to do, uh, make sure that actually worked. Yeah, cool. Uh, get uh, commit dash m. I'm going to say episode three colon uh, audio lib comma menu lib comma pause menu. And we're going to say git push. And there we go, now it should be on the GitHub. Uh, well, it will be as soon as everything uploads. It might take a second, so I got some audio files in there now. Those are always the largest. There we go, perfect. All right, uh, and everything's set up. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you did, leave a like, really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next time. Uh, next Friday should be the next video, hopefully. I hopefully will be able to hit that in time. My school is starting soon. Uh, I'm in college taking classes, so uh, that might be a little bit difficult. I might get in my way. We'll see if I have to change the schedule or not. But um, if the plan is next Friday. If there isn't one next Friday, then I'm probably busy with school. Uh, and then before that, slash after that, or somewhere in the range, I'm going to post some, uh, some in-depth video about the media system and an in-depth video on the audio system, uh, just as documentation for those if people want to use those outside the tutorial, or you're curious what else these systems have to offer. That being said, I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you all. Goodbye.